Coming up on this episode of 57 Studebaker Restoration, Brake Light Repair. Hi, this is Tool Dude Tony. I'd like to welcome you to this episode of 57 Studebaker Silverhawk Restoration. Today, we're going to fix the brake lights on Dorothy. Now, when these cars were originally built, the brake fluid was a little bit different than it is these days. When you convert these things over to the new silicone uh, brake fluid, the uh, pressurized hydraulic brake switches that they had back then pretty much stopped working. You might be able to replace it, they're good for six months, but every six months, every year, you're replacing them. Prior to the uh, hydraulic brake switches, they had these, an old mechanical switch. This is like from an old 40s truck. Mechanical is uh, not going to need any hydraulics, doesn't matter what kind of brake fluid I have. So I'm uh, going to show you how to put that in today on 57 Studebaker Renovation Restoration. This is the inside of the wheel well in the front of the car. I've removed the splash guard that goes here so I can get to the brake assembly. This is the brake pedal. This, you push on this, it moves forward and it puts on the brakes. The master cylinder is back over here someplace. Okay, I'm going to put this switch on the floor here. It'll be mounted about here someplace and when the brake pedal goes forward, the switch will move and, it, and turn on the brake lights. So, the switch isn't going to just do it by itself. I've got this, which is a bolt, stainless steel bolt with um, some stainless steel washers and I'm going to drill a hole in this, put this in place, and then uh, it'll use, it'll rub against this then to actuate this brake lights. I located the wires that come from the old brake switch down in the middle of the fender well. Okay, I drilled a hole in the floor right above the uh, dimmer switch for the high beams, poked the holes, poked the cables through it, put new ends on them, and now I'm going to go ahead and hook this wire, this set of wires up here in this wire loom that's already here. So what I think I'm going to do is I'll mount the switch probably about here and that gives me plenty of room for actuation and I'll put the bolt in with all of this happy stuff right about here. Then with this switch put on the brake, click, light comes on. Should be good. Start with the bolt and the, with a washer on it. Slide that through. Another washer. And a nut. against the pedal. This little washer. Followed by the chrome roller. Followed by another washer. And finally the last lock washer. Okay, so now I've got a nice area here, about an inch wide, that that uh, little lever can bang into. This is going to be mounted on the wheel well side of the car. This is going to be mounted up on the floor behind the brake pedal. This will sandwich it, sandwich the sheet metal between these two make a pretty strong thing. I'm going to use some stainless steel screws to hold it together. I've already marked and punched the holes to get them started. I'm going to go ahead and drill them out now. Okay, this is the metal bracket that I put in that sandwiches that uh, floor pan between those uh, two brackets. 
got the bolts holding it to in. That was kind of a pain to do. Now let's reconnect the wires here. There we go. Let's test it, make sure it's working. Go ahead, all the way down, see it releases. Keep going even further. There we go. So you go down, I'll let it go back up. Bam. All right, we should have brake lights here. All right, let's give this a test. Vic, go ahead and push the brakes. Yeah, baby, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, this is a uh, switch by Napa. You can get it, I guess, Napa guys. It's an Echlin SL128. Check it out, boys and girls. This is what we need right here. Go ahead, push it again, babe. Yeah, baby. Okay, thank you. All right, that's it. Game over. That's what I'm talking about.